In 79 AD, the author and naturalist Pliny the Elder was in charge of the Roman fleet at the naval base in Musenum. When Vesuvius erupted, he went by ship towards the coast to help rescue people, but ended up reaching point to the south of the mountain, where he died. His nephew, Pliny the Younger, later wrote an account of the eruption, as he probably watched it from this hill. Today is hazy, but in a clear day, one would see the extent of the disaster from this point. There, across the two gulfs between the coast and the volcano, is the famous archaeological site of Pompeii. We're in Pompeii, which together with other towns around Mount Vesuvius, was buried under lava and ash when the mountain erupted. After walking street after street while fighting throngs of tourists, we are getting somewhat disappointed. We had expected to see some of the famous restored houses. That was not possible. We're unlucky. Most of them today are cordoned off from the visitors. These are the photos of the houses taken when they were open to tourists. We're getting a sense of what it must have been like to live in this fairly large town home to over 20,000 people. Herculaneum is a smaller town than Pompeii. There is less of a crowd on its streets now. The most interesting houses are still roped off, but we're stopping by the house of a surgeon. He didn't have any good tools because he graduated from that school. So he just used the knife to slice the guy out, pull some of the stuff out of him. The guy was very stoic probably belonged to a stoic philosophy school. This is a real find for us. It's a well-preserved Roman villa in Oplontis, 33 feet below the modern street level. This residential complex, historians believe, belonged to Nero's wife, Poppea Sabina. This is an actual house with walls, pillars, and ceilings intact. Mosaics are on the floors and the walls are covered with frescoes. We wander through the house and imagine how the lady lived. We're in the great entrance room called an atrium. It has an opening in the roof, a small draining pool at the center to collect drain water and a mosaic floor. It has some fine frescoes on the wall, which seem to expand the size of the room. From the atrium I access Pompeia's private rooms. We see where she had rested and watched the fountains in the shade. I'm walking along a lengthy corridor which ran between the public and the private areas of the house. Along the back of the house are many small alcoves and rooms, which Romans used as sleeping cubicle. This visit leaves a huge impression on me in particular. The villa was built over 2,000 years ago, but looks as our house might look today.